it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. Hi, this is Carol King from Music City, and you're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. to the show everyone thanks for being here tonight got a great show planned for you uh back about 27 years ago aaron was out with his brother on a property that uh, the family owned and they had an encounter out there he's going to go into that along with uh, a separate incident that happened to him uh, while out there in arkansas we're also going to be chatting with uh, dan and dan comes to us from arizona and again, this is probably early 90s, 90, 91. Uh, Dan is out there in Arizona with his family and uh, they have a run-in with the creature. Uh, if you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance to check out sasquatchchronicles.com, you can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, you know, as Dan and I were talking the other day, uh, he actually had, he'd seen the uh, the Phoenix Lights, what they call the, the Phoenix Lights uh, that happened back in the mid 90s in Arizona. So I asked if he would actually share that with us. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Aaron to the show. Uh, Aaron, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Wes. And I know uh, about 27 years ago or so, uh, you had an encounter out there in Arkansas. Uh, if you would, kind of take us back to that moment. What were you doing and what happened? Well, I was kind of a lucky kid in this area. There was some uh, university land right down the road from where I lived. And I lived out of city limits. And this land was posted for sure. But as a kid, you know, I was on that land anyway. There was one man, he was a constable county cop that lit, that took care of it, but he was gone a lot because he didn't be in a cop at all. He was out running out wherever. But we used to track, there was a couple ponds on this land, and one of the ponds was just full of bass, I mean, huge ones. Well, we fished, we hunted morels down there and everything. One day we were just leaving. Uh, I was in my grandpa's pickup, and uh, we were just nearly to the end of the road where it turns into pavement on my drive on my road where my house was and this thing came out off the edge of the road and turned and looked right into the headlights and uh it wasn't huge like i don't i couldn't tell you exactly how tall it was but i can tell you this it was dark black as night but its face was was kind of a grayish i could see its face it kind of had like a lighter colored face 
and it turned and looked right at the headlights. And I looked at my little brother. I said, you seeing this? He said, yeah. So we was right at the edge of the road. It's like we caught it crossing. Just, I mean, like it went across the road, but the way it was not on four legs when it crossed that road, it was moving kind of like a, it kind of, like a scurry sort of, it had long arms and it kind of was moving sideways and it, it looked at us for a ways as it was going across the road. And I stopped, I said, stop. And, uh, and, uh, I jumped out. And once that thing got to the other side of the road, it either went through the fence, under it or over it, but it was so fast that uh, we got out, we looked, we walked over to the fence and was looking, trying to see, and it, it was gone. Yeah, man, you're crazy jumping out. Uh, were you able to see any portion of the face? Yeah, it was what I saw was it was a kind of a flat looking face. And I don't know why this comes up to me, but it's like if you've ever seen and it was it wasn't a cow, but I can't help but think because if you've ever seen those cows, they have them here. They're like all black and they have a white looking face. And when it looked, it reminded me of that. But it was it it was not a cow. It was nothing big like that. It had two eyes that looked right at me. I mean, like two eyes in front of its face, not on the sides of its head. And I was trying to figure out if, because I have a second part that goes to this. We had uh, kind of chalked it up. I we, we turned around and went back home. I was telling my dad and my mom about it. My dad was like, well, you know, he, they must tell him what it was. It could, uh, you know, he, he, he wasn't opposed to anything, be anything that wasn't supposed to be there, but. It was either, I cannot remember if it was before or after that. We were down there at that pond and it was pitch black. We didn't have, we were down there sneaking down there. It was probably midnight or one o'clock in the morning. We was in a fish. Just me and my little brother, me and him went were everywhere together, as brothers should. We were down there at that pond and we were both on the backside. And there's woods. I mean, this, this university land, I don't know how many acres it was, but it was huge. And they had an orchard on this land where they did, they did splicing where they would, some of the trees would have uh, pears and apples growing on the same tree. And I was thinking, cause there, and there was deer, there was deer. We went up on top of the hill and I, I didn't see the deer, but there was piles of deer poop everywhere. So if something wanted to live there, there wouldn't be any shortage of things to eat. Well, anyways, to make a long story short, we were down there fishing and, we started hearing this racket snorting and growling and just carrying on. And it was right behind us. And we could hear it sounded like it was more than one thing, but it was running back and forth I, so heavy that I could feel the body. I could feel it when it hit the ground and it, it didn't, it just didn't sound like hooves. It didn't feel like, cause I'd never, I've been down there hundreds of times and I never had any issue like that. But it was running back. It basically did this until we left. It was running like back and forth, back and forth behind us. And I finally looked at my brother. I said, man, I'm about ready to go. How about you? He said, I'm, I'm, let's go now. But we left. Like I said, whatever it was, it was heavy. Now, this thing we saw, if it was a Sasquatch, it had to have been a young one because it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, nine feet tall. It was, it might have been four or five feet tall. But, I've been in the woods my life. I've never seen anything walk on two legs besides us. But, and I saw it and I just started putting things together. And I'm like, you know, cause that thing, the way it went, it was headed right for that property. Cause there was a few houses scattered out around the property and there was only one gate in to that property. You had, you had, you had to go down and hop the fence to get in there. But it, uh, we were all over that place and I remember that orchard being there. I don't know. I just found that pretty strange. My little brother and me, I was kind of freaked out about that for a while after seeing that thing. And then having that happen to us down there when we were fishing. Yeah, a lot of eyewitnesses talk about them and that sort of behavior, that running back and forth, back and forth. Uh, what do you make of that behavior? It's scary as hell. That's what it is. I Yeah, I was pretty freaked out. I had my little brother with me. We're five years apart, so... And he was fishing. We were not too far from each other because I remember telling him, what do you think that is? Because it was just right behind you. I never could see it because why we didn't have a flashlight. I don't know. I mean, there was a moon out, I believe. But uh, because I could see the water on the pond when I was standing on this, you know, beside it. But this thing, it 
I, I just don't think one thing could have made that kind of, maybe it could have, could make that kind of racket running back and forth and snorting and kind of a growly type of sound. Whatever it was, it wanted us to leave, and that's what we did. I was not going to stick around. Yeah, I think most of their behavior is meant to terrify you. And I don't know why. They seem to be way more aggressive with people who are fishing as opposed to people who are hunting. Can I ask you, going back to that very first encounter when you were with your brother in the truck and it turned and looked at you, would you say you were looking more at an animal or would you say you were looking at more of a human? Um, I never had an animal turn and look at me like this. It's like it, it's like, uh, kind of like, you know, uh, you caught me. Like it was, I mean, I don't know how it didn't see us coming down the road. But there was weeds and trees on both on one side of the road where it came out. There was a line of big old trees that were down through there, and it and when it came out, it just like I said, when the lights hit it, and the lights, you know, the old trucks, the lights are kind of yellow. They're not really white like like the LEDs they got now. But uh, and the truck was fairly loud, but when it stepped out and the way it moved, me and my little brother was just kind of. I kept asking him, "Have you ever seen anything move like that?" And it didn't, you know, it, it turned, kind of turned its whole body when it looked at us. But it's like it went a ways across the road. It's still looking at us while it was moving. But it didn't like, you know, like a normal animal, possum or a raccoon or a deer or anything. I, they just don't look, look at you like that. This thing looked right at right into the wind. I mean, like it was looking right at us, not at the headlights, but just. And, uh, not, you know, I don't know what it was. I just know that its face was lighter. I couldn't see anything around other than its face. And I could see like a dark shadow of its arms and its arms looked relatively longer than what I didn't think there was no, there ain't no zoos around here where a, a monkey or a gibbon or something could have gotten out. Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound like, uh, something that escaped from a zoo, um, how did this, you know, having this encounter with your brother when you were driving and then you guys go fishing and you have this weird experience of it kind of uh, scoping you guys out, how did this uh, affect your life or did it? I didn't really get scared when we saw it cross the road because, well, for one thing, we were in the truck first. But when we were out there on that pond, that was, that was, that make your hair stand up. I mean, it, and I don't have much hair left. So, but yeah, it's, it, that scared me when the, when the issue, when it happened in the truck and we saw this thing, I had the safety of being in the truck and I, but I didn't, I got out. I had to look, I was like, man, I, I've got to get out. So my little brother was driving. He stopped and he went around the driver and I got out of the passenger. We headed straight over there where it went. And it was right there by one of those metal gates right in that section. It was shut. Like I said, I don't know if it went under it, over it. Once it got to the other side of the road, it, it just disappeared. Of course, if it wasn't looking right at me, I don't know if I'd have seen it. It was dark. And it was dark hair, but it definitely had hair on it, all over it, except the face. It was kind of, kind of a grayish, uh, a lighter color, a smoky color. And the eyes thing, the thing about it is the eyes were right in the middle of its face, like, like, like you or me. But yeah, yeah, it did. It affected me. I didn't look the same way when I went into the woods. I, you, you don't look at things the same way as you do before. I remember going back down there during the day, but I don't remember ever going back there because when we were kids, we was all over that plot of property and it was big. I, man, I, I'm trying to think how many acres it might have been. Now though, I drove by there the other day and it's all been developed. But it was there through my whole childhood. I ran around. That's what we did. And when I was growing up, we ran the creeks and caught frogs and wolf snakes and whatever else we could catch. Yeah, it sounds like a nice place. Makes me wonder if, you know, how many times the creature saw you and your brother growing up on that property. Um, let me ask you, you know, if someone were to ask you, what is Sasquatch? What would you say to them? And there's no wrong answer, of course. Well, I'm not sure what they all are, but I can tell you this. They definitely, you're not, I don't think you're as less as likely to see one when you're looking for something like that. You see these things by accident. It just happens to happen on the fly. It just, you know what I mean? But I, no, I don't know what it was. I, 
But I do believe, after hearing a lot of the accounts from listening to your show, I mean, like like everyone says, they can't. Everybody can't be lying. You know what I mean? It can't just be. You know what I mean? The stories are too personal. I mean, you can tell when someone's telling you something. I mean, you know, I try to consider myself a pretty good judge of character. And uh, I've been wanting to ask my granddad. He's seven or uh, ninety-seven, and I haven't been over there. So I've been really thinking about this here lately. And I'm thinking, I was thinking about going over there, but he's such a big Christian that I don't know if he would admit to seeing something if he did. I don't know if that makes any sense, but he, he's kind of on the, you know, he didn't. But he was born, raised during the Depression. They lived in the woods. They did. They. But yeah, this thing, I just, in my heart, I know that wasn't deer that was making all that noise and stomping like that. Deer's just, I'd never seen a deer heavy enough. It sounded like flat feet stomping, running around on the ground, is what it sounded like to me. And it was lots of them. I mean, lots of them. It was just back and forth. I was like, and, you know, I just, I like I said, it shocks me that I've been in there all those many times I've been down there, and I never had it act that way. Whatever it was, I don't know if we interrupted or it had something on its mind, but it, it but I got the feeling, it, it got its point across, I'll just say that. No matter what it was, it definitely, we left. And I would assume that's what it was after. Yeah, it's like I was saying earlier, and I told you off the air, I really think most of their behavior is meant to terrify you. It's meant to make you go away. It's kind of like the threatening dog that barks at you all the time. Uh, you know, they're, you're, you're always worried there might be that one moment where he bites. But fishermen, as opposed to hunters, they tend to be way more aggressive with uh, fishermen, which I don't really get. You know, I, I would you would think it'd be the complete opposite. Uh, they'd be very aggressive with uh, hunters, but not with fishermen. You know, generally fishermen aren't armed, and hunters are armed. And it's weird because in most encounters, when people are fishing either during the day or at night, uh, they'll get this sort of behavior, and it's scary. If I could go back and do it again, I would have took a flashlight. I would have loved to just turn around and shine. Maybe I wouldn't have wished I took a flashlight, but I part of me wishes I would have had one. I could have just swung it around and looked through there because it was there was kind of like a where it wasn't really a road, but they had drove a vehicle. I mean, it was the pond bank was there was like a little strip where you could walk around it. That's what I and then woods, nothing but woods. I don't know if there's anything. I just know that it scared me. I know there's a lot of woods here. I mean, it ain't like where you're where you're at, the type of woods, but it's hot and humid, and, yeah, there's plenty of places. Yeah, Arkansas is a beautiful state. I mean, plenty of food, plenty of water, plenty of cover. Uh, it's a beautiful state, and there's a long history of these things, of people seeing these things. And even up until this day, I get all kinds of reports coming from Arkansas. Uh, so it doesn't shock me one bit that you had this encounter. And I really appreciate coming forward, man, and sharing what happened to you about 27 years ago. Well, I never really got a chance to talk to somebody who might care about my story. So I really appreciate you calling me back and willing to hear it. I, most of the people, if you mention it to them, and I didn't mention it to very many people, but they just kind of look at you like, oh, you know, you know, like, but I'll tell you, if you're there and you hear these noises or see these things, it's, it's, it's a little different ball game. I didn't wet my pants, but if it would have got any closer to me, <laughs> went down there on that pond, I probably would have. That's, it, it's bad. Yeah, I hear you. Well, there's no shame in that. That seems to happen a lot. Uh, but I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks again, Aaron. You know, no, I never saw like orbs, but I did see the lights over Phoenix. Um, that was another thing with my dad. I might have been 15, 16. We're driving back from Tucson on the 10 up to Phoenix. And I'm like, Dad, what are those lights up there? He's like, I don't know. Let's let's turn off and go go in the middle of the desert. And, and take a look at them. So we drove over to South Mountain area and we were looking up, you know, everybody's like, oh, they were flares, they were this, but that ship, whatever that was, that ship, it flew right over us and it was like a mile long. 
This weekend marks the 25th anniversary of the Phoenix Lights, a formation of lights spotted in the night sky by thousands of people here in Arizona and then throughout the Southwest. Now, some have tried to explain that phenomenon, saying that it was caused by military flares, but others say the answer is still unknown, but is out there waiting to be found. Well, for the most part, we look to the sky and we know it's a bird, it's a plane, but you know, this one has never fully been explained. I know the mystery continues. Today marks the 21st anniversary of the Phoenix Lights that has UFO buffs convinced that we saw something from out of this world. So to me, it looked like the B-1, I think it's the B-1 bomber, the one that looks like the boomerang. It looked like that, but a mile long. And then the lights were on the front of the ship. And then when it flew over us, it blocked out because we were we were out by South Mountain and we, we could see all the stars. And when it flew over, you couldn't see stars for like, you know, 30 seconds as it flew over. And it was, it had to have been like 500 yards wide and then a mile long. Yes, right there in the Starfleet uniform. Next up on the show, I want to welcome uh, Dan. Dan, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Wes. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I know that we're going back to uh, 1992. You were 13 years old in uh, Arizona. Uh, if you would, kind of take us back to that moment. What were you doing and what happened? So um, every year, this this group, my par uh, my dad knew some friends that every year they went to Mingus Mountain, which is west of Cottonwood, southwest of Flagstaff, kind of the Jerome area on the backside of Jerome. If you ever heard of Jerome, Arizona, there's a ghost town there. <laughs> it's a pretty crazy little town. But on the backside is Mingus Mountain. And my dad's friends used to go there every spring break for like 20 years. They, they went forever. And this is before campgrounds. Now that area has all these campgrounds and buildings and stuff and there was none of that then and so um they came they came up early they came up on a monday and me and my dad wanted to come i wanted to come on monday but my we had so much going on back then and we raced bmx and there was just so much going on that we had to come up on saturday but the whole group of people kids and parents were all there from monday to sunday and so they were already up there partying and doing little competitions and stuff and like, you know, carry the egg race, carry the egg with a spoon race and stuff like that. So it was like a kind of a big week long party. They even brought like these tiki bars on trailers and trailered them up there and had like this whole town set up just for this fun week. And I've always wanted to go with them and we just never had a chance. So I don't know. I don't remember why this one year my dad's like, okay, we're going to go. Uh, but we have to go Saturday to Sunday, you know, so we're going to miss the whole week, but let's just still try to make it fun for the one day. So I remember we just jumped in my dad's old Chevy and drove up there and we saw antelope driving up there. And I think it was the first time I ever saw an antelope, you know, at 13, I'm like, what kind of deer is that? <laughs> and so my, you know, it was like the Prescott Valley, uh, which is like sagebrush and juniper and stuff. So it's more a flat land before you get up to the, the Mingus mountain where there's trees. So, uh, we saw a ton of antelope in the field. Um, so we drive up and we get to the camp spot and it's pretty wooded. I live in Oregon now. And I, I, I joke to my dad, like, you don't know what the woods are until you come to Oregon, the Arizona woods are pine trees, but they're, they're small, they're tiny. They're, you know, they're like little trees compared to the Oregon forest, but it was still, you know, back then it was the forest to me. And so we get to this area and on the right, so when you pull into the camp spot, on the left is the town they built and all the kids are over there playing and all the cars are on the left. And then straight ahead is all the tents and they had trailers, like camp trailers and stuff. And my dad and I just had a tent. So there's a couple tents straight ahead. And then on the right is this huge field. And it's kind of like, um, you know, maybe it was a swamp at one time. There is a little area, I think on the map that shows like a swamp or like an old waterway i don't know if there's water up there now it's arizona <laughs> but back then it was full of water 
And then it was like bugs and spiders and ladybugs all in this huge field. And it was probably, I want to say like 200 yards by maybe a hundred yards, maybe even a little bit larger, uh, this huge field. And so that was on the right. And so we pulled straight in, we set up our camp, like pretty much right where all the tents were straight ahead. And my dad and I were going to sleep in the same tent. So we were kind of close to that field, maybe about 25 to 50 feet from the field. We put our tent there. Um, and then we went and enjoyed the day, you know, with the other kids and the parents. And one of my best friends was there from, and we're still friends to this day. Uh, we, you know, we played and all did all that stuff. And then um, during the day, everything was good. The only thing is we were super loud, like, you know, people were screaming and yelling, cheering on. And, you know, a couple of guy, older guys were drinking and, you know, I was 13, so I wasn't drinking. <laughs> um, but, and my dad, my dad, you know, he's like the two, two beers and he's, I love you, man. I love you. Like he gets a little tipsy at one beer and then at two beers, you got to cut him off. So I remember he had two beers. And so it's getting late and like everybody's kind of calming down for the night and, you know, we're sitting around the campfire and telling stories and stuff. You know, at that point, my dad, you know, might've had another beer or something by that point. Uh, he doesn't drink much. So when he does drink, he gets a little, a little kind of drunk. Um, and so I remember we were going, we were going back to the tent and he, he falls asleep like within seconds. I do too now. Um, but he fell asleep within seconds and he was snoring so loud. I remember that. And so I was trying to go to sleep and I think I finally fell asleep. Um, and we're in our, you know, we're in the tent and I, so I fall asleep and then I just, you know, I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. It's probably one, two in the morning, no big deal. So I, I grabbed my dad's mag light, one of those big, heavy lights, you know, that are heavy, that have the three huge double D batteries in it. I grabbed his mag light and I knew where the field was. And so I didn't turn on the flashlight at all. I just walked straight out to the field. Um, and early in that day, we would play in the field. There's a bunch of spiders and stuff in the field. And I'm not afraid of spiders. So I was, you know, putting spiders on my hand and showing the other kids, whatever, just kind of being that guy or that kid, <laughs> the funny kid. Um, so I knew where the field was. I knew it was like 25, 30 feet from my tent. So I, I don't think it was like a new moon or a full moon, but it was pretty light when I walked out there. So I didn't need the flashlight. And I don't like to, I didn't want to wake anybody else up. So I didn't shine the light at anybody. I just walked out to the field to go to the bathroom. And I remember looking back at the campground to see like if anybody was awake, no one was awake. The fire pit was like almost glowing, but not, you know, not completely out, but not like a fire, a raging fire or anything like that. But no, I couldn't see anybody sitting around the, the fire. And so everybody was sleeping again. It was probably one, two in the morning. It was just quiet. And so, you know, I go to go to the bathroom and I'm standing on the edge of that field and I'm kind of just looking down, you know, looking out a little bit, but not really looking at anything. And so all of a sudden I hear like footsteps and they're super quiet, but out about maybe 40 feet. Uh, this part, I, I feel like it was closer than I was hearing the noise closer than it was almost like it was echoing through the field. And so I was like, Oh man, a deer, you know, a deer's walking by out in the middle of the field or maybe even elk. Cause there's a ton of elk up there. It's getting a little closer. I, I even looked back. I remember looking back at the campground, like, okay, maybe someone got up and they're, they're going to the bathroom too. And it's just them. So at that point, and then all this, I'm, I feel like this whole part right here took like whatever, like four hours, but it was probably like, 30 seconds <laughs> it's just time slowed down so i remember i was like oh, i'll just look straight out and see what's out there and so i turned the flashlight on and as i pointed out straight out a man walks by and it's again it's 40 feet out and it, it's not a man it was you know whatever you want to say bigfoot sasquatch but it was a per it was a thing on two feet walking past my light i mean plain as day right there. And this thing was not, you know, man size. I'm 13. I was probably, I'm six, three now. So I was probably like five, eight, five, nine back then. I was a tall kid growing up, you know, it had to have been at least seven feet tall from where I was standing, maybe eight feet tall. And it was, you know, covered in hair. 
so when I shine it up, it, you know, I didn't get any eye shine, like red eye shine, like how uh, when you shine light at a human, you can kind of see the reds of their eyes. It was more um, like dog reflective, like if you shine a light at a dog, how you see almost like brown eyes, but like reflective, translucent. But it wasn't, it wasn't looking too directly at me. And this is a part. So as it's walking and, you know, I was thinking too, and this was, I was like, you know what? 1987, Harry and the Hendersons came out. I'm sure I've seen that, saw that movie before this whole thing. And so I was like, oh, maybe I just, you know, saw it was, was dreaming or, you know, you always look back like, okay, maybe I never did see this thing walking, but you know, it didn't look anything like Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. It didn't have, you know, the face of that movie, Harry's face was all bigger than it was. And, you know, the teeth were made bigger and all that. And it, so what I saw was didn't look anything like Harry. <laughs> so I knew, I knew what I saw, you know, this was not my imagination. It wasn't like I made this up in my head or anything. I was really looking at something that had no clue what it was. And when it looked at me, so it didn't look at me back. Like it wasn't looking back like the Patterson films It actually like it's walk. So imagine you're walking and you kind of look over and you kind of side eye the person, but don't look directly at them. That's what it did when it looked at me and almost like I felt like it was going to wave to me like, Oh, hello. And then keep walking kind of thing. That's what it looked like. It looked like he just looked at me for a second, kind of gave me that look like, I'm friendly. Don't shoot me or don't chase me. He looked back. And then, and all this again, in my mind, it was like an hour long, but it was probably one, two seconds. This whole shine the light up. I see him. He, I, and then I kind of freaked out and I shine the light back down. I don't know why. I don't know. I mean, I'm 13. I, I feel like I probably just went like, Oh my God. And I shine the light back down. And then by the time I shined it back, up he was you know gone from straight of head and i shined the light to the left which was probably another 50 yards to the tree line and he was gone just like that and it is crazy too is i heard him come up coming up to when i shined him up in the middle like when i saw him when i put the flashlight down it's like there was no noise and he was gone it's almost like he saw me he knew i saw him and he just took off, either took off running or, you know, did like the huge steps that, do, that they do, like the long strides, walking faster, was gone within a second and no noise. And so I figured he knew I saw him, he saw me and he's like, oh man, I got to get out of here. Uh, so I, he just booked it out of there before I could shine my light back up. Yeah, and we'll come back for uh, descriptions on what you saw, but what kind of happens next? So, I again, I wasn't fear, like I didn't f have any fear of them. And it was almost like, so we have, do we have dogs. I have two dogs right now, and I've had dogs my whole life. And animals to me, I, like I feel like I have a connection with animals. And the way it looked at me and kind of like, I felt like it was just saying like, Oh, hello. And I didn't have any fear inside. I didn't, I wasn't, I was scared because I didn't know what I was looking at, but it was almost like it, it kind of, not that like it's telepathic, but it almost told me, don't worry. I'm not going to harm you. I'm just walking by. I'm just passing by like, you know, don't chase me. Don't. And, and I had that like calming feeling. Like, okay. I know what I saw. I'd probably, I probably, pee a little bit on myself that night you know i zipped up my pants um you know turned the light off kind of sat there for a second like oh my god what did i just see no one's gonna believe me i can't uh, my dad's you know snoring he's probably still a little buzzed like I, i'm not gonna wake him up he's not gonna believe me anyways plus he might jump up and run after him or whatever i don't know what would happen so i walked back to the tent and i just kind of laid there for a little bit and i'm looking at my dad like Oh my God, I got to tell someone, I got to tell my dad, I got to tell him like, you know, what am I going to do? And so I, I actually just sat there for a while, just kind of thinking about it, thinking about it. And then finally I probably just fell asleep. And so the next morning I wake up and that's all I'm thinking about. And I'm like, you know what? Someone else had to have seen it because like it just walked by almost like 20, well, 30 yards from our camp. 
someone in the area had to see it. So I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be on the news. People are going to, other people saw it in the area. You know, it's going to be a big thing. So I started like in the morning, you know, just we had coffee and all that. And, you know, no one's saying anything. And, and I look at my dad, nothing. I just said it. Has anybody seen a Bigfoot here before? And the other families like, you know, laughing and stuff. And they're like, Oh yeah, Bigfoot. Yeah. He's here. You know, the Mogollon monster. And, and that's the first time I heard that. And technically we aren't, we weren't on the Mogollon rim, but the forest service kind of, or the forest area, you could get from the Mogollon through trees from Mingus mountain all the way to the Mogollon rim. So it technically could have been the Mogollon monster and they all joked and stuff. And, after they were joking, I'm like, okay, you know, no one saw it. I'm not going to say I saw it right now. I'm not going to be that kid that's like, oh, yeah, I saw Bigfoot last night walking through the field because I didn't want anybody, you know, back then I'm 13. I didn't want to be made fun of and stuff. So I didn't tell anybody. And then probably, I don't know, I don't think I told anybody for at least a year. I think I finally told my dad. Like, hey, you remember that night? And he's like, oh, you should have told me. We could have went out and looked, and looked for it. And like, no, I don't want to look for it. It's like, it was friendly. I, he knew I was there. I knew he was there. I didn't want to chase him. I'm not going out looking for him. I just, it was, it was, it happened. It's over and kind of live on. But, you know, now I go out, I, I hunt elk, I hunt deer. I went turkey hunting this spring for the first time. And I'm out there all the time. So I'm I'm listening for, you know, turkeys and, you know, deer and elk. And in the back of my mind, I'm also listening for Bigfoot all the time. Just listening for, you know, listen to the forest, listen to things walking. I feel like I'm out there so much that it's it's going to happen at some point. And so I just want to be ready. I want to, you know, I would never shoot it. I want to just look at it, maybe try to take some video of it. But Unless it's charging me, I'm not going to shoot it. Yeah, I hear you, man. I think that you absolutely go on high alert after an encounter. And I'm glad to see you getting back out there. Take us back to when you shine the flashlight on the creature. If you would kind of describe what you saw. Yeah. So, I mean, I saw its full body. So I saw, you know, really long legs, pretty short torso area. You know, the legs were longer than the torso. It, It wasn't like, fat it was very muscular very tall almost skinny muscular looking like not it looked like it didn't have an ounce of fat on him maybe he was hungry or something but and he had really long legs i keep saying he because you know i i couldn't see breasts or anything so i I think it's a man and then the way it looked at me and i looked at it kind of how you have that feeling like another man looking at you kind of thing you kind of feel that it is a man not a woman kind of feeling you know almost like a hello <laughs> to another man. I don't know how to explain that, but, um, and then really long arms, you know, long, like below the waist arms. And it was doing, you know, it was walking pretty fast when I saw it. And it, at that point it, it felt like it almost froze, looked at me and then kept walking. So the arms were swinging pretty, you know, pretty long back and forth. And then it, again, it side-eyed me, but I still saw, side of its face i saw one eye plus like half another eye and then the nose you know there was no real like a human nose how it sticks out it was more flat nosed and then of course like the eyebrow you know that part was a little bit bigger than you know a human i didn't see its mouth i don't remember even look seeing a mouth at all just kind of i mean they i don't even think it when it looked i don't think it's smart like i couldn't see a mouth so just the nose, its eyes, and then the top of the forehead. And it was, you know, a little bit of skin, but mostly hairy all around. And then the head, I remember the head being smaller than like proportionate to its shoulders. And it didn't have like a very big neck at all. And its shoulders were big, but then its head was like, I felt like the head was as big as my head. It wasn't like a huge head. It wasn't like cone shaped or anything. It was just kind of normal looking compared to the rest of the body, but almost a little smaller than it. I think it would have been like, if you look at a gorilla or something, they have huge heads. This was not a huge head. It was almost like a human size head on this huge body. 
Yeah, they are kind of proportioned like a cartoon. Did you guys ever go back to that area? Yeah, we went back. So I went back to that campground um, a lot. We, 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 once we knew that was there and I wanted to go see it, and I actually told my friends in high school, we went a couple of times when I was like 15, 16 to that same campground. And we even tried to like get up at two in the morning, <laughs> go out in the field. We were like making calls and stuff, but no, we never saw it again, not in that area. And I looked on the map and actually that field, it's still there and there's, you know, buildings around it now. And it actually walked from south to north. I thought it was east to west, but now it makes perfect sense. It was walking south to north. And that field's probably 200 yards long. And so I heard it coming in. I probably saw it right towards the end of it, of the field. And then again, it probably had like 20 yards left to the tree line. And it booked it right into the trees. I mean, once it saw me, I think it either took off running or just did like a, you know, speed walk. But again, I heard it coming up and then shine the light on it. And then after no noise and couldn't see it anymore. It was like, it almost, I mean, it, it didn't disappear. I know it just didn't disappear. I think these are flesh and blood. So I, I know it just didn't disappear when it saw me, but it booked it past my light. And so, and then it was gone. Did this change your life at all, Dan, seeing this creature, you know, here you are 13 years old and, uh, you know, you're seeing something that really shouldn't exist. Did it change your life at all? Yeah. And I think, you know, I've told this story to many people over the years and, you know, I'm not embarrassed of it because I, you know, I saw it. I believe this was real. I think the other sightings that people have seen are super real. You know, it's not a coincidence that we're all seeing the same thing. You know, these things are out there. And so, yeah, it's changed my life. And I actually, you know, I watch all the Bigfoot shows on TV now. I, I actually made a Bigfoot t-shirt and, and um, you know, sell it online. I just like the whole Bigfoot community is awesome. I watch, you know, Expedition Bigfoot. And I listen to, uh, my wife and I listen to your podcast when we go on vacation, like to Glacier National Park and stuff. We, we listen to every episode that we've missed up until the day, you know, the day we we are leaving or coming back. Um, and so we've heard all the, the stories and it's, you know, now that I'm, I feel like, you know, my wife's never seen one. So, you know, she's probably listening and like, okay, you know, that might be true. I'm listening going, Oh my God, you know, these stories are all true because you can tell when, you know, someone's making something up, like going back to this in my mind last night and remembering that we saw antelope, like, little stuff like that I, I kind of forgot all about and you listen to these stories that you're doing on your podcast and you know people are like oh i was eating a hot dog and spilled ketchup on myself like they it's like when you see something so you know intense in your life you remember everything from that day yeah it'll definitely stay with you the rest of your life i mean it's one of those things that never really goes away um can i ask you you know you being a hunter and outdoorsman have you ever seen the balls of light that we talk about on the show have you ever seen anything like that out in the woods you know no i never saw like orbs but i did see the lights over phoenix um that was another thing with my dad this was i don't remember when the lights over phoenix what year it was I might have been 15, 16, but my dad and I were at, um, we're driving back from casino. I don't know why we were at a casino. I was not old enough to go, but we were driving back from Tucson on the 10 up to Phoenix. And I'm like, dad, what are those lights up there? He's like, I don't know. Let's, let's turn off and go, go in the middle of the desert and, and take a look at them. So we drove over to South mountain area and we were looking up and that, you know, everybody's like, oh, they were flares, they were this, but that shit, whatever that was, that ship, it flew right over us and it was like a mile long. It, it was that same night we saw a ship fly right over us. So that whole Lights of Phoenix thing is real. But again, it's not the orbs you're talking about. I've never seen the, the orbs. I've seen UFOs, I've seen ghosts, but I've never seen, uh, I've never seen like orbs in the forest before. Yeah, that's really cool that you and your dad saw the uh, the Phoenix Lights. Um, you know, Kurt Russell, the actor, uh, Wyatt Earp, Tombstone, 
Uh, he actually is the one that called it in. If you look at like the historical record, that night a pilot called in the lights that were near the airport and he didn't know what they were and uh, they had a conversation with the tower. Well, that was Kurt Russell. And I watched an interview later with him and he was talking about, he didn't know what it was. He said it looked like one huge ship with all these lights around it. Um, I'm curious, what did you and your dad see? So to me, it looked like the B-1, I think it's the B-1 bomber, the one that looks like the boomerang. It looked like that, but a mile long. And then the lights were on the front of the ship. And then when it flew over us, it blocked out because we were we were out by South Mountain and we, we could see all the stars. And when it flew over, you couldn't see stars for like, you know, 30 seconds as it flew over. And it was, it had to have been like 500 yards wide and then a mile long maybe a mile long, but it was huge. And it just, what we saw underneath was just black, like almost it just blocked out the night sky and and it was quiet, no noise, nothing. And that's when it flew, it turned, it followed South mountain, the line, and then it flew over Phoenix. And that's when most people reported it. I think we saw it early on and then it would, it sat over Phoenix for a while. And then there's a ton of video online. I've looked and it's, I mean, the, all the video looks the same, you know, same as ours. And then the lights kind of sh- faded out like one at a time. And again, that could have been clouds coming in front of the lights. Cause that's when they were like, the military said it was the flares and they're like, that wasn't flares. I think <laughs> right over us, we saw it plain as day. There's no way that was flares. So, uh, I don't remember what year, I think that was 95 or 96, the lights over Phoenix. But if you just Google search that, you'll see a ton of video. And I'm bummed because back then, you know, we didn't have cell phones, so we didn't have cameras everywhere with us like we do now. Um, so I didn't, we don't have any video of that or anything, just what we saw. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, just a couple of days ago, there was these orange lights over uh, San Diego and, you know, the government's saying it's flares. But if you look at the government statement, they're like, mm, could be flares. That's a possibility we had dropped some flares in that area. You know, who knows? <laughs> it's one of life's great mysteries. It's like, did you guys drop flares or not? And they're so wishy-washy on their answers. Um, going back to your encounter with the creature, what do you think it was doing? I mean, do you th- I know that you don't know and I don't know, but do you think it was just going from point A to point B and you guys ran into each other? Or do you think it was doing something else? Yeah, I was thinking because... You know, I didn't have my light on in the beginning. And when I went out to pee, I mean, it had to hear me pee. And maybe that's when it was like, oh, shoot, someone's standing there. And, you know, I think they're nocturnal. So, or the, and they can see at night. So it probably saw me and was like, oh, I got to book it through this field before this thing sees me. And so it was walking pretty fast. And I think that's when it, you know, maybe it stepped on a stick or something and I heard it. And then right when I shined up the flashlight, you know, I think it was just passing through kind of just on its way from, yeah, point A to point B and just happened to, you know, (laughs) cross paths with with me. Again, I think it was just coincidence. We were both there at the right time. I don't think it was, yeah, I have no clue really what it was doing. Yeah, I'm always curious on eyewitnesses' perception as far as what's going on. And I think you're probably right. You know, you guys just kind of ran into each other. Uh, Can I ask you, what do you think Sasquatch is? I think it's a different type of human. I think it's, um, you know, I think it's flesh and blood. I don't think it's an ape. I think it's it's like another species of human that, you know, was here thousands of years ago lived here with the you know with the native people and you know because natives talk about it all the time and it's all in the native legends and stuff and all in their hearsay and so i think it's just another form of human species and when the europeans came over here it just went into hiding it just you know it's been hiding in the forest and caves all that kind of stuff and then you know it's it's curious just like all animals are curious so once in a while it comes out to see what's out there. It comes out to, you know, get food and, and it, you know, happens to be when man is in the forest and man sees, you know, sees it. And so we report it, but I think it's in hiding most of the time it's, you know, living underground in caves 
or you know way in deep woods where humans don't go i mean we went up to olympic olympia national forest in washington and you know we were just hiking on the trails and it's even on the trails it's super thick woods and deep woods and and i can see definitely living you know even a human living off off the grid and never see another human for like five or six years so these things have been doing it you know their whole life they they're the best you know like the best hide and seekers you never find them so i feel like too it's kind of in in waves you know you'll have a couple sightings here and there and then the next year you know no one sees them so maybe they come out they get a little curious and then you know too many people see them and then they go back in hiding for a few years and so i think they're just another species of human just a you know and they just are uh, I I do feel it was a man that I saw that day, not a you know not an animal, not an ape, but a friendly man. At least mine was friendly. Yeah, I respect your opinion and your insight on this. Do you think it's odd that after all of these years, uh, we no one's been able to catch up with this thing? Well, so I thought the same thing, and my one friend was like, um, you know, he's a big believer in Bigfoot as well, and. And he, he said, how come they can't find any bones? And I'm like, well, have you ever found any bare bones? Because I've never found bare bones in my entire life. And so, and I've been out, I've found bear scat. I've seen bear, I've seen black bear up at Mount Bachelor. I've seen, um, you know, hunting, you hear, I heard a bear, but I've been here in Oregon now 12 years. I've seen one bear and I've never seen bare bones. I've never seen like a bear skull or bare ribs, anything. And so same thing, either I think Sasquatch, if they're, if they are like a human species, they probably bury their dead. And so they're burying their own bones or, you know, they, I don't know, I don't want to say they eat each other, but I don't know what happens when they die, but they obviously hide the bones. So again, and then you talk about people shooting them and, you know, I, I know there was that one podcast you had about a guy like by a lake and he shot it and then he, he thinks he shot it twice and then, you know, he couldn't find it. Well, if they have so much hair on them and you do shoot them, say with like 30 odd six, you know, the blood might splatter a little bit, but it's going to get caught in the hair. And then if I was a big, big foot and I got shot, the first thing I would do is run and, you know, go to my hiding spot and you're not going to fight them, you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to find them in their hiding spot. That's why they're hiding so well. Um, and then maybe it died later, but then it's, you know, brother, uncle or her father buried it. So you're not going to find the bones again. So I don't think shooting it is a good idea. You're just going to make it angry. And, you know, unless you shoot it right in the head between the eyes, you know, no one's going to, ever bring a body back unless they shoot it in the head. And I, again, I don't feel like I would never shoot a bear because I've only seen one bear unless it's running straight at me, like wanting to kill me. Same thing with Bigfoot. I'm not going to shoot a Bigfoot unless it's coming right at me, ready to kill me and something running at you at that speed. And you're going to try to shoot it in the head, you know, pretty much kiss your life goodbye. It's, it's almost impossible. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, ma'am. And that's the fun part about that question is that there really is no wrong answer. And uh, you learn a lot when you listen to people you tend to disagree with. You know, some people think it's an ape and they won't hear anything else. Some people think it's uh, the Nephilim and they won't hear anything else. And I think it's important to kind of hear other people's thoughts and ideas. And I'm with you, Dan. I, I want you to be right. I want it to be some flesh and blood either animal or ancient human we just for whatever reason haven't been able to catch up with i have a hard time with that but that's what i really want it to be uh, i really appreciate you taking the time to come on and and share what happened to you 